Good afternoon again, everyone. My name is Max here. I'm a technician here at Hilltop RV Superstore in Escanaba, Michigan. I'm back to go through the inside of this coach on this beautiful 2016 Montana that we have here. What I'd like to do is we're going to start on the outside here and we're going to go inside and I'm going to start showing you all the features of the inside. We do have a grab bar handle that simply lifts up and rotates out for help getting into the coach. We also have our four step stair here. Now I do want to remind you that this will pinch some fingers, so please follow the instructions that are located on the bar by gripping under the bar, pulling out, pulling down, reaching up, grabbing the next bar, pulling that down, and then we can take the top bar and we can pull our last step down, okay? That's gonna save us from pinching our fingers. Now before we go inside, I do want to show you the beautiful awning that we do have on this coach, and I'm going to open that up for you right now. Once we go inside, I will show you the controls on how to function this, this awning. Okay, this awning is fully extended. And now how I know that is that I see our valance, this piece of cloth that is coming down in the vertical position, I can also see the bare tube on the back side of our awning. That means it is fully extended. Now what I do want to remind you about our awning is our awning is simply a sunshade. It's not an all weather awning. It's not made to be out in serious inclement weather and things of that nature. Now this does have what's called a self dumping feature and you'll see this in your owner's manual. But that self dumping feature is for emergencies only. It takes approximately 50 pounds of water. That's about six gallons of water to actually sit on this thing before that will actually work. So we don't want you to depend on that. Again, like I said, this is simply a sunshade. I do not want you to put it out in the rain. If water does pull up on here, it can stretch the fabric. It could even bend the tube. So like I said, we don't want to bring this out in the rain. Now, I understand that it's not normal to think that no one's going to bring it out in the rain. I know people are going to do that. If you do choose to bring it out in the rain, I do want to remind you that that will void the warranty if there is any damage done that way. But if you do bring it out in the rain to save your awning, what I want you to do is simply come up to one of these arms, and we can do this on either side, and you can simply reach down here, pull this down, and lock this screw into position. And what this does is tilts the awning in one direction or the other, so the water will simply run right off of it. That's what I would like you to do. But I must remind you, before we put our awning away, you are going to want to put this in the back into the fully extended position. Like I said, our awning is beautiful. This does have LED lighting underneath it. The last thing I want to tell you about is, is wind. Now, we don't want to bring our awning out if it's very windy, all right? Um, anything over 15 miles an hour. What's 15 miles an hour? That's about when you can see a, a flag or anything a little stand straight up and be blowing in the wind. That is probably too much for our awning. If you're not using your awning, I want you to retract your awning and bring it in. If you're going to be away from your coach for any period of time, I would like you to bring your awning in into the stored position. Now we're going to go inside the coach and I'm going to show you the features of the inside of the coach. We're going to start off right here, and this is what's called the monitor panel. Okay, this does have, as you can see, a variety of switches and buttons on it, and I'm going to explain all of these and what they actually do. We will start in the upper left hand corner with our monitor panel itself. On the very top, you're going to see four LED lights that are going to have full, two thirds, one third empty, or charged, good, fair, and low. And I'm going to explain what those actually do. Now we have what's called gray two. Now gray two, as you can see when I push the button, it reads empty because that tank is currently empty right now. Gray two is the galley tank on this, like I said before, that is strictly the kitchen sink only. Below this is gray one, and when I push that one, it's going to indicate what's in the gray one tank. And as you can see right now, it is empty. The gray one tank, again, like I said earlier, is going to be for our shower and our bathroom sink. Our black two does not do anything on this coach. That is for a second optional bathroom that this coach does not have. It does have black one, however, which is going to be the same thing up top. And this is going to be for our toilet. 
Below this, we have the fresh water tank. That is going to tell us the level of our fresh water tank. As you can see, it is currently empty. And then below this, we have our battery function. Now, our battery function works in two ways. When I am plugged into 110 volt AC electricity with our 50 amp service that I showed you out back, and I push the battery button, I want to see all four lights come on. That lets me know that my converter is charging my battery. If I am unplugged from the wall and have no 110 volt electricity coming into the coach and hit the battery button, it is going to tell me the status of my battery that is on board and my battery alone. To the right hand side, you're going to notice a large paddle style switch. When you see a large style switch on the, in a coach like this, you can automatically almost assume that it's going to be for 110 volt electricity. And in this situation, this switch here is actually for our ceiling fan located in our living room area. So this is going to turn our ceiling fan on and off. Below this, you're going to see a red warning label. It says battery hookup required for slide out operation. Because of the hydraulic system that is on this coach, it takes a little more extra power. So we do need a battery on board for that to function properly. Below this, this coach does have the winter package. So it does come with the optional tank heaters. And you're going to see the fresh water heater, the black tank, and the gray tank heaters, okay? Even though this is only one gray tank light, it does cover both tanks. Now these simply turn on when they are on, the light is on, that lets us know that that system is currently on. Now these will not 100% keep your coach from freezing. What they are simply made for is maintenance. If we are driving from one area to another and happen to go through a cold pass to where there could be some freezing temperatures, we wanna simply turn those on. And those are 12 volt DC power. So they're gonna run off the battery of the truck and that will keep our tanks warm enough so they don't freeze. On the right hand side you're going to need to notice that it says lights underneath it and above it you're going to see an interior light switch, an ODS flood which is opposite driver side flood and then you have the driver side flood. Those are giant flood lights that are out on the passenger side and driver side of this coach. Again when it's hard to see right now the red is a little hard to see that those lights are on. When the lights are on that means that switch is on. Below this you're going to see our water heater function indicated by the label below and you're going to notice that there's gas and electric and as I said before on the outside portion of this video that I showed you that there is an electric switch located actually on the water heater of this coach and like I said it does have a redundant switch which is located right here so in order to have the electric function of our water heater working which works off 110 volt AC electricity I must have both switches in the on position now remember that I do not want you to turn the electric function on if you do not have water in the heater itself. On the left hand side is going to be our gas function of the water heater and that is going to run off LP gas. So I can turn this on and the LP gas will light my water heater and it will work like that. These systems can be worked simultaneously and they can work together by having gas and electric on at the same time. What I like to do there is if you're using a lot of water um, if you have a big family and you're going through a lot of hot water, what I'd like you to do is turn both of them on. What will happen is the gas will fire up and recover the water a lot faster than the electric will, and the electric will maintain it from there. But you can use just either or if you do choose so. Right in the middle switch here, you're going to see water pump. That is going to turn on the water pump in the system, which is going to draw water from our fresh tank, which I showed you how to fill up earlier. Slightly to the right, you're going to see more lights. We have a ceiling light, we have our porch light, and our little cap light, which I showed you earlier, for helping docking. Below this, we do have our awning retract and extend. This is where we're going to extend and retract our awning. Um, by Right now, I'm retracting the awning right now, and I can continue to hold this button until that awning comes all the way in. And if I happen to stay on the button too long, like I am right now, because the awning is all the way in in the stored position, we are not gonna hurt anything. So don't worry about that. You also have right here next to it the awning light, which is the LED light located underneath the awning. On the bottom right hand corner, you're going to need to notice slide room and bed slide. The slide room is going to operate the two living room slides. We have a kitchen slide located on the passenger side of the coach, I'm sorry, on the driver's side of the coach. And then we have our living room slide or dinette slide on the passenger side of the coach. These are hydraulic slides, so one switch will operate both of these. And I'm going to operate those right now so you can see these extend. All I'm going to do is simply hold the out 
function of these buttons and you're going to see that both slide outs are working simultaneously. Now they might not necessarily go out together because again like I said about hydraulics they're going to, the fluid is going to take the path of least resistance. So once this one is all the way out the fluid will now go over to this next slide and as you can see it's already starting to creep out. Once this one's completely out this one will go out as well. Now you can see how much space we actually have in this beautiful Montana. The one other slide out button on the bottom right hand side is going to be for our bedroom slide. And that is going to be this slide right here which is a cable system slide. It is a little different slide from the hydraulic slide. So we are going to operate that right now and we are going to operate that in the same function that I did with the hydraulic slides. I am going to hold the out button and we are going to bring our wardrobe and bedroom slide out. And what we are waiting for is it to completely extend. All slide outs must be all the way in or all the way out or they will leak. Once I hear the motor stop I can let off the button and my slide out is now fully extended. On the very right hand side of the monitor panel you are going to notice a little panel that says Max Fan. What that is is called a fantastic fan or Max Air Vent and that is located directly above. Now this system here is a great system. These fans uh, are, are phenomenal in the way they function and they last a long time. So what we can do is simply hit the open button and as you'll notice that the vent is motorized and it is opening. In the corner as you can see you're going to see a little umbrella, a little blue umbrella up there. And what that is it means it's a rain sensor. So if we happen to leave this fan open or this vent open and the fan running if it does get wet on the outside it will automatically shut down and close. Now I can control the fan functions from here by setting the speed of the fan by turning the fan on. I can shut the fan off from here. I can also close the vent from here. And as you'll notice it is closed and the fan is off. We also have one last light switch down here which is simply our island light above our kitchen island here. You have storage to the right and storage above. I'm not going to get too deep into the storage of the coach because there are, is ample storage and cabinet space located on the inside of this coach and that will come in all the brochures if you're interested in this Montana model. Below we do have our converter. Okay, and this is a precision dynamics converter. It is one of the best on the market. It is made here in America and is very nice. On the very bottom side is our AC side, our 110 volt electricity. This is just like our home breakers that you would see in any typical uh, home that we live in. When these do trip, they will pop to the middle. An orange light or a red flag will show right here. I want you to reset them by bringing them all the way to the bottom all the way back up to the top. On the very top portion of this is going to be our DC side, our 12 volt side like an automobile. These are standard ATC disc fuses. You can purchase them at any hardware store, automotive store, or gas station around. I always suggest having some extra fuses on hand. There's no sense getting mad over 25 cents. The beautiful thing about this system is right below it, it's kind of hard to see. We might not be able to see it in the video, but right below here there are LED lights. Okay, and those LED lights will come on and when one of these fuses blow. So we'll be able to know exactly what fuse it is that went out. They are also labeled on the panel as well. The thing about using this system with the LED lights is the circuit needs to be on. So if I come inside the coach and turn my ceiling lights on and they don't come on and I turn that switch off, I will not see the LED light here. I need to turn that switch back on to energize that circuit. On the far right you're going to see some larger fuses. Those are safety fuses. If you hook the battery backwards it is going to blow these fuses. That's what those fuses are for. They're simply safety. Now you're also going to notice a blinking light down here. It happens to be on Precision's brand of converters here. What that is called is called the Intelligent Wizard. And what the wizard does is it actually knows how to charge your battery. So if it needs to be boost charged, it'll charge it up to 14 volts. At a standard charge, it'll charge it at 13.6. And when the battery's full, it will actually stop charging the battery so the battery doesn't continue to outgas and we drain the fluid out of it. 
Again, this is our converter in a, in a hole. Um, it will make some noise time to time, the more things that we have on, because it does have a fan cooling system in it. Next to this, you're going to see a couple black panels and ports here. What this is, is the onboard vacuum cleaner. So we do have a dust port down on the bottom for sweeping. And we also have another port here to hook up with the hose. We're going to go work our way back into the bedroom here. And we'll start up here in the front of the coach and we'll work our way back to the rear. As you can see, we have a lovely, lovely master bedroom here in this beautiful 2016 Montana. This coach has everything inside of it. Um, it does have the air conditioner in the rear here. It does have one up front. Um, you're going to notice a couple things inside here. Um, you're going to notice on top here is a crank handle. What is this? This is our antenna. This is going to help us pick up TV reception. What I would like you to do on this is follow the instructions located that are printed right on the, the wheel itself. I want you to crank it up. When the lever actually stops, don't crank it anymore. Just stop. It's done. Now that it's up, I can actually pull this wheel down and rotate my antenna left to right to help pick up TV signals. But the most important thing is, you'll notice that there's an arrow here and an arrow here. We need to line those arrows up perfectly before we bring it in the down position. If we do not do that, the antenna will not be stored in the proper position and damage could occur. So right now I'm going to bring it down. And I'm simply going to crank it down just like I did in the up position. And when it stops, it is done. And as simple as that. We do have our laundry chute here. And then we do have a large closet in the back that does have lighting. It does have storage underneath. And again, a large coat rack. It's perfect for everything that you need to store for inside these coaches. Like I said, they don't let any room go to waste. We even have storage underneath on both sides. Even on this coach, there's even storage underneath the bed. Not a lot of storage, not too deep because of the slide out mechanism that is operating the system, but we can still store blankets and pillows underneath this. This does have the convenience of multiple AC outlets inside this room to plug in any device that you need to. It does have overhead LED lighting, which a switch is located in the back of the light itself. We do have a fully functional large TV in, in the master bedroom here. And you're going to need to notice that this buckle strap coming in. One of my two cent recommendations is if you are, do have a buckle strap like this, what I would like the customer to do is simply put a washcloth or a piece of cloth behind this so this buckle doesn't rub up and down on our screen and cause a little dull spot in it. It'll save the life of that. Again, we do have our dresser and some more storage below. We also have our light switches on the side which control all the functions and lights inside this bedroom. Now we're going to step into the bathroom. Now this bathroom is located, connected to the master bedroom and it also connected to the hallway so we can access this from two different ways. This is a standard bathroom with beautiful Corian countertops. This also has another max air vent in it, just like the one I showed you earlier. The controls and functions on the wall here are exactly the same as the one in the living room. I can turn on the lights here. We do have a medicine cabinet and cabinets below. Again, just like I told you about the front compartment, it's hard to see, but there is some exposed plumbing underneath here. So I just do want you to be careful of over storage so we don't do damage to any of that equipment. You have a large shower here with a trifold glass door. It is very, very important that this trifold glass door is in a stored position when we are going down the road. This is tempered glass. It, it can break if it is shooken all over the place. So right now, it is in a locked position with this lever by being fully extended and it won't move. And that's the way we want to keep it going down the road. In our shower head here, there's a couple simple things in the, in the shower, but nothing bad. What I want to show you is this fitting right here. Now this fitting may drip from time to time when you are using the shower. That's the only time it will drip. And that is okay. 
It's allowed to let a little air in there to aerate the water and to let the water drain back out of the system. Please do not manhandle it because if you over tighten it, you will make it leak at that point. We do have a standard RV toilet. This is actually a little bit upgraded model. This is a actual a porcelain bowl, which is very nice. Um, to operate this, this toilet, I can simply push part way down on the lever. It will fill the bowl with water. I can use the, the toilet at this point. I can then depress the lever all the way and it will flush it. This way we'll go down towards the hallway and show you the other wardrobe located here. Again, we do have another large wardrobe section right here uh, for, again, plenty of storage inside of this coach. There are also outlets in here. This coach has, happens to be washer dryer prep. So there is a washer dryer function that is in here. So we could put an RV model washer dryer in here and be able to hook up to that. Now I do want to remind our customers out there that sometimes we forget about these faucets. Those faucets need to be winterized too. Right here on the wall is going to be our thermostat. Now this is a multi-zone thermostat. It can look a little intimidating or get a little confusing, but trust me, it is not. I am going to simply show you how to function this multi-zone control. In the upper left hand corner is going to be my power button. I am going to turn the power button on. You are going to see the blue LED light come on. I'm going to hit the power button, the zone button, I'm sorry, the power button again. And what's going to happen is that, turn some of this stuff off here, it goes on, is that I'm going to see zone one off. What that means is that everything that is in zone one right now is off. And how I choose what is in zone one is by going to the mode button. Now I can hit mode here and we can go to air conditioner. We can go to auto, which is going to be the fan function of the air conditioner. We can go to the furnace and we can go to a fan to where we can just turn it on manually high or low. Or we can go back to the off position. Now zone two, because this coach happens to have two air conditioners on it, is simply gonna run the second air. So we're going to go to zone two and you're going to see that I only have the air conditioner and fan function of that air conditioning unit. So right now I am going to turn this into off position. So I know I see zone two off. Go back to zone one. Zone one is off. Okay. I can control the temperature settings with these two up and down arrows. I can hold this button down, it'll tell me the inside temperature, which is currently 80 degrees. I can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius with this one over here. I can set the clock and program it right here. Now, when we get into the programming of this thermostat here, we can actually program these different items to come on at certain times of the day when we're gone. We know that we're going to be back at a certain time. I can set this up so the ACs come on a couple hours before I come home. That way I know my RV is nice and cool. But what happens sometimes is that we get lost in the programming, okay? And then next thing you know, my air conditioner is coming on at three o'clock in the morning when I didn't want it to come on and things of that nature. So in order to reset that system, just let's get right back to the factory reset. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this all the way off back to the blue screen, okay? This is the off position. What I would like you to do at this point in this screen here, which is going to be the very first one when we push the on and off button, is I want you to hold zone mode simultaneously. What you'll see on the screen is INIT zone one and two. INIT stands for initialize. That means we simply reset the system. Now to be done with this, all we're gonna do is hit the power button, it's gonna to go to off. I'm gonna hit the power button one more time, show a blank blue screen. Our thermostat is currently off. If there are any questions on this, please contact us at Hilltop RV Superstore. Over here we do have our dinette. This is what's called a freestanding dinette because the chairs are loose, it's not a booth. But there are straps that actually hold these chairs into place when we are traveling. And again, I do highly recommend using the straps when we go down the road to keep things from bouncing around. We do have, in this coach, what's called day-night shades. As you can see, 
the top one here is called the night shade. There's nothing that comes through it. Below it, we have what's called a day shade. And some light does penetrate through that. Now on these, what happens to happen is, is in these, it's hard to show you on these, but I can show you on this window here, is that you're gonna, these strings right here are what's actually holding this blind up. It's done by friction. And it's attached to a little button down here. What happens in time is this string does stretch. What I would like you to simply do is just turn that button a little bit, put a little tension back on these strings, and your blinds will work just fine. This table does extend out to the outward position. And it does have an extra leaf to open this up and have more room on the diner, dining table. I do want to recommend, uh, remind you that we do not want to have the leaf in the table when we go to close it and go down the road. We need this room for when the slide out comes in against the kitchen island. We need to keep that at the same distance it currently is at. We do have an overhead light. That switch is going to be located on the light itself. Next to this, we do have two reclining sofa or two recliners here, an entertainment type style sofa. Uh, above, we do have storage and more LED lighting. Those switches are this switch is located on the wall here next to the window. You're going to notice some emergency exits throughout the coach. There happens to be one right here. The nice thing about these emergency exits is we can actually use them as a functional window. We can open these up and it'll hold it in place right on the red handle and vent the window properly. In the case of emergency, I want to push this all the way through, grab the red triangle, remove the screen, and then I can actually exit out this window in a case of emergency. By closing it, I'm just going to pull the lever back in and put it back right in the storage position. In the rear of the coach, we do have another large sofa. This sofa does convert into a, a fold-out style bed. Again, we do have lights above. Now, one thing I've noticed on coaches over the years is that coach companies like to sort of hide switches sometimes. So you gotta be careful, and if you can't find a light switch, you know, be persistent and just keep looking. Like this one here, where was this light switch? It's sort of hidden.